Welcome to another episode of Can of Comedy. This is a special one, though, for you guys today. It's a bonus episode. Bonus. Um, before we really get started, I need y'all to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you to our listeners, people who keep tuning in to us because y'all love us. I really fuck with y'all. Thanks for being here. And I'm your lovely host, Jerrica. I go by the name Dante Hill. It's your boy, Talon Harris Jr. It's your boy. It's your boy. It's your boy. We haven't been in the studio in a minute. I miss my favorite guys. This is actually our first link up in the new year. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, for real. That's crazy. Some yeah. time went by because, um, you know, I, I think we all just got busy and mm -hmm. it's hard to keep coming back and forth. On my part, I know for me, from LA all the time. Yeah, you're the only person that got to leave your home state to come over. I'd be there. so Not committed state, to the but... pod, though. I'd be coming back yeah, yeah. here for y'all. <laughs> um, but we really couldn't let all this comedy beef bullshit happen without us jumping in. It doesn't feel right. Yeah. Just have it going on around us. And we'd be texting our group chat like, yo, y'all seen this? Y'all seen that? So I'm glad we up in here about to get it popping off. But before we start, let's just check in with each other. How y'all doing? I'm cool. I'm cool. I got to like readjust to this, man. I just moved at the top of the year. I moved to Harlem. Yeah. So a lot of like this last bit of time has been just me adjusting to that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of moving some things around and everything. But I just kind of got used to just building up my little domestic life a little bit for a second. Yeah. I haven't really ever invested in that. You was, in the, you was in the Bronx? Before. I was in the Bronx. No, I was in the Bronx. I grew up in the Bronx. But a few years ago, I moved to Dykeman. Mm -hmm. Okay. And on my I wasn't fucking with it. I think I'm just past that party. Like, I don't like when my block is like a party outside all the time, like on the sidewalks and all of that, That's like fair. three in the it's morning. And all that, that, sounds, yeah. that sounds specific. To you. It yeah. sounds like you talking to a specific um, <laughs> ethnicity. I mean, it, over indictment it is. But anyway, anyway, it's like that. I'm just over it. I like, to, I like a vibe to be like one or two blocks up. Mm -hmm. It's like mm -hmm. a strip or something I could get to. But I like my neighborhood to be like, you know. I like when white people walk their dogs at night. You know what <laughs> you I mean? Said I need some little, gentrification. Little That's so crazy yeah, because I used to live on that block, and it was yeah, it was know. like transitioning to that, but now yeah, it's like fully for real. white yeah. now. Yeah, and you know my like my pops from over there, so I, like I yeah. I came up over there since I was like fourteen, fifteen, going over there to see it. So it was like yeah, I've kind of seen it transform, and it's still happening. But I like like when it's a marriage between the two. Cause I don't like seeing all the black people pushed out. Like yeah, that ain't that fair. ain't great to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I like when it's some balance. You know what I mean? That's nice. But yeah. So How your, about you? your new neighborhood is less hookah, is what you're saying? A lot less hookah. <laughs> you got to go two blocks up for the hookah okay. now. <laughs> How about y'all? What y'all been up to? I mean, I've been seeing y'all on the gram, because especially you, you've been pretty public. You've been having a lot going on. Yeah. I'm You're just, you know, just working trying to hard. be consistent, um, trying to put out like at least a clip a week, you know, Yeah. Sh shows. I just came back from Boston. Mm -hmm. I did uh, eight shows out there, so that was cool. Um, I got a, one of my homeboys I went to high school with. He lives in Boston, so me and Shorty, he let us stay for the weekend. That was fly. Nice. fly. He lives like 15 minutes from the spots that I had and shit, so that was cool. Boston always show love, you know, when I go out there. Really? A little four-hour drive. It's not bad. Four hours not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Four hours ain't bad now, especially with good people. Mm -hmm. Word. But yeah, can't wait for springtime. Tired of this. Uh, it was very nice today, so it was like... Uh, it's been nice kinda, for the last few days, but I feel like every time you have a conversation about how nice it's been, it get bad the next day. Yeah, it's no been avoiding the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> it snows. <laughs> Thanks. Jericho, what you been up to? Because I could talk about that for uh, a while. <laughs> I've been just traveling. I'm tired. It's a nice hat. You have been. I know. Thank you. Yeah, it's giving generic why. <laughs> if you know, you know. <laughs> um, I am tired. I've been traveling a lot. I just came back from Mexico City. Getting lit. I was mm -hmm. there for a wedding with a bunch of white people, and I had a fucking ball. White people? I was the only black girl. The only? only in a whole girl. situation? The whole situation. I'm uncomfortable in situations I'm like that. I'm not going to lie. Even if they're cool people. There was like two black dudes. That was cool. Yeah. But I was the only black girl, and I had a fucking ball with them. They Mind you, to I you? went. Oh, the best. I went to Mexico City by myself. It was a solo trip, and I got invited to a wedding, and I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to go. I haven't been to Mexico City. I want to go and visit. Anyway, so I pulled up first two days. I was by myself. I'm a loner. I just wanted to have a good time. <laughs> I wanted to travel the city without being attached to anybody. And That's then cool. I hang out with some of the people from the wedding, and they were like, "Oh, you by yourself? No, you not." And then the whole time they kept inviting me to stuff, and they was drinking. Like I've never seen nobody. Wait, so like you that. went there by, by yourself? By yourself, mm -hmm. and then you met the people that was having a wedding, mm -hmm. and then got invited. I met their to the friends wedding. and stuff. So like people who, el who uh, other people who were invited to the wedding too. Yeah, I met them, and they were like, "Nah, you not by yourself no more." And they kept bringing me to stuff. When you do things like that, are you one of those people who like? Um, I'm only asking because you're a woman, 
and I'm thinking about you being some another country by yourself. Do you like give somebody your location? Is this somebody who at all times kind of knows my where you at? My mom always has my location. Yeah. Okay. My mom knew where I was staying. I stayed in the Airbnb. I had a little door jam handle thing yeah. that I bought yeah. like a security I heard about that. I just heard about pole this. Yeah. Stuck under my door when I slept at night. Oh, good, good. I was cool. I'm pretty yeah. much, but I also feel like being, I told her my mom was always worried or my dad's always worried about me traveling solo. Mm -hmm. But I go, I think being from New York really adds it does. to it because you're already kind of always like looking yeah. around, noticing your surroundings. I noticed that a lot with my girl. She has like no street smart. She don't like look around, turn around. I remember one time I went to pick up from work. <laughs> Where's she from? She again? worked in a mall. She's from Morocco. Oh, and I was, mm -hmm. she was working in a mall and it was like the clear glass. And she was walking my way and I was standing there like a creep on purpose because yeah. I just wanted to see because I'm always kind of testing. Attention. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's walking my way for like damn near a whole minute, never once looked forward. And then her co workers are looking like, who the fuck is not, this? Not I'm like walking by the window. <laughs> creepy and shit just bad not yeah, the creep test right, yeah, 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 I did that crazy. shit like that a few more times that, only one time I had a job like that but, so funny, but yeah man. nah cause that's just that's a real thing I think you come from here you just have like a more look over your shoulder kind of like yeah. attitude so I think I'm that's why it makes me I'm always like nervous when I am going to a different country but I am also like I know myself and I know how to like yeah. take care of myself yeah. I'm not gonna tell somebody I'm here by myself yeah I'm just solo traveling right no, right. I'm not gonna do that. Yeah, you know. So yeah, I also am so. After seeing so many tourists in New York City, I'm embarrassed to look like a tourist when I go visit places. Yeah. So I purposely always pretend I know smart, what the too. fuck I'm I doing. Do that. I do that here. I hate looking. <laughs> I, I hate that looking lost. Brooklyn. Yeah. You look stupid. You look stupid. Yeah. I don't want to look stupid. I do that in Queens. Like if I don't know where yeah, I'm at, yeah. I always try to look like anywhere. <laughs> like I always want to look. I never want to look like a come up. Yeah. That's the only reason I even ask. I feel like yeah. with women, it's just a different situation. I just feel like people look to victimize you if you look of course. like you know yeah. what I mean. More, of course. You know but right? if y'all have free time, definitely go visit Mexico City. I had a ball. Mexico. Mexico City. You can consider yourself a vlogger no no i just be doing stuff yeah yeah and sometimes <laughs> i catch it on record and sometimes i don't yeah yeah i feel like out of the three of us town is good at well he chronicalizes what he does professionally because yeah, you, you have to for what you do but you i feel like out of the three of us you would know the most of what you have going on in your day-to-day -day. you're the most consistent with story. what you have going on yeah in your life i yeah. consider you a vlogger thank you <laughs> oh, and then i just came from puerto rico too but that was for yeah, something else yeah. That was a two-day trip. Um, so yeah, I just been traveling, Good working vibes. stuff. My dad's getting back into all Curb his mode. stuff. Oh yeah, it's like curb, curb stuff. So it's now I'm like, a, I know crazy I'm season. Full In work play. mode for me. But um, yeah. In play. Let's get into this Cat Williams bullshit. Which was crazy. So, as y'all yeah. may know, at the top of the year, Cat Williams shook the room <laughs> by going on Club Shay Shay with Shannon Sharp and. Really letting the cat out the bag. Really the letting went the nuts. cat out the bag. I was highly entertained. It took over my Twitter feed for a couple of days. Everybody's Twitter feed. Yeah. I was Biggest highly entertained in by it. I was loving it. And that video got 60 million views. People love drama. And he really brought the drama mm -hmm. a lot. I mean, I don't know. What do you guys think? It was crazy. That view part is insane. Like really looking at the metrics of that. Because in the first few days, it was going up mm -hmm. by the millions at mm -hmm. a consistent rate. And nothing really does that. Like even things that blow up like that, like big controversial things, normally get a, a crazy 24 hours is more expected with something viral. You know, 24, yeah. 48. It was accruing for a long time. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was dropping names though. Yeah. Yeah. When's the last time somebody has done that? Yeah. But I think a lot, Fair. you know, I think a lot of people try to come up with dropping names though. I think with Cat is a little bit more to it because it's not just anybody saying Orlando it. Orlando Brown. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it's not going to hit those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right. It, it's never going to be the same. Funny. Like it's always going to stand out when you throw names. But I think when it's certain people and you're able to articulate it a certain way, you know what I mean? Because I feel like Cat's, the way that he expresses himself, you know what I mean? And the energy that he comes with, it's really unique to him. You know what I mean? And I think For that sure. kind of makes a lot of the claims and everything stand out more. Because who else? I, I've been hearing. I don't know if we're biased because we came up in this world, but I knew that that shit was fake on Steve Harvey head. Y'all ain't know that? I you did. Know? I heard his about head. it. His hair. Oh, I, yeah, knew, I, that. Knew, that. I yeah. knew that. I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. That wasn't a shot. I didn't like that. The but I didn't always. Right. We didn't always know, though. At one, some point, we really thought that was his hairline. Yeah, at I one was, point. Yeah. yeah, but I'm saying I feel like a lot of people in the general public knew. So I, didn't, I didn't find it, out from Cat, though. Yeah, and no. that's what I'm saying. But him saying it, it became a talking point. And yeah. I think that's to that's to the testament of the way that he delivers certain things, what it's like accompanied by and shit. You know what I mean? Like, I've never seen an interview like that. No, I've never seen well, it. Well, I was watching, I was trying to figure it out. It was just, it, it felt like almost like a, like if an interview could ever be a special, it was like, it was that. that. Yeah. You know it was, what I mean? It was three hours, right? Yeah. 
It was very long. Yeah, um, I enjoyed that more than like the last two, three specials I saw from Cat. <laughs> For real, not even trying to be sarcastic. I mean, no disrespect, but yeah, job. it was like formatted. Even the Shannon Sharp set looked like like if I didn't watch that show before, you would swear Cat set all of that up, yeah. like to be presented a certain mm -hmm. way. It's like when Drake does interviews and it's like he has his own camera guy shoot it and he edits it his, himself and everything. I didn't yeah. know that. You know what I mean, yeah, you know, I didn't know that. Kind of vain, but, <laughs> but yeah. <laughs> What's something that stood out to y'all the most when y'all? What do y'all think? Seeing the Cat interview. What y'all think? It's interesting with us because I feel like a lot of shit you know. Like, did anything catch you by surprise? I mean, talking about, was he talking about the joke stealing situation? Yeah, like with Cedric, a few other people. I mean, people are going to steal jokes. Also, I, 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 I mean, that was the most interesting to me because I like to hear about it, but people are going to steal jokes. I just think that's definitely a thing. Are that you wrong for being, for being tight though if it's yours? Like for being violated if your I, joke got stolen? Can't you say like it's a form of like flattery a little bit? You're like, oh, he stole my joke. He wants to be me so bad. How you feel about that? You a comic? <laughs> he wants to be me so bad. <laughs> Not if you take my my shit and you do it on TV and you get yeah. you getting yeah. like a check from this. You know what I mean? Yeah, I kind of that's different because it is. Yeah, it's essentially your jokes. I feel like if you're a comic, and again, you always I refer to you, defer to you. I feel like when you're a comic, your jokes are your equity. You know what I mean? Like, that's literally your product. Mm -hmm. I feel like if you were, like, in trades or something, you could say bonds, you could say a specific terminology that's something that people could uh, uh, look at and know that that is yours. But in the art of telling jokes, you know what I mean? It's just that what you develop that and you make it bigger, you make it better according to how it's working to help you get to a better opportunity, a better position. So I think specifically if you're a comic who's working out and somebody else is having success off of, the back of what you created and you get nothing out of that especially mm -hmm. isn't that like the carlos mencia joe rogan thing something like that do you know about that yeah Car um, carlos mencia has been just known for stealing stealing material. jokes right yeah so especially that era when he had a show and i think that made it hit more you know what i mean and i feel like cat when he was talking about cedric the entertainer because I, I was like his biggest guy with the joke stealing, right? Yeah. In mm -hmm. reference. Been a little second. I haven't seen it in a minute. But I feel like Cedric, he came at the most about joke stealing. And I feel like most of the bitterness in that is because Cat was on Comic View and Cedric was doing Kings of Comedy. Right. So I think in 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 retrospect, he look at it like, damn, like, nigga, I just got a commercial on BET. You in movie theaters and shit. You yeah. were doing arenas and you're taking my, my shit. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and then they be thinking, I think a lot of times, like I've seen in music and other shit, they be thinking you're never going to get big enough to really even have a platform to really speak on how I did you. Yeah. Not to say Cedric did that, but just playing devil's advocate told what I think that could come from for Cat or anybody else who would feel that way in that situation. Also, why did he say he wouldn't be in the movie with Ricky smiling unless he was wearing it? That was crazy. <laughs> <laughs> he said he put it in his contract. He put his contract. I put it in my contract. <laughs> we was his next that. movie first that. Sunday? Was he wearing a dress? Was he wearing a dress? <laughs> he sure did. It's in my contract. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that's that's crazy. A, I felt terrible. Why is that? That was stand up, yo. That was theater. That's, you're right. I see, that's now, why he's I a goat. The, yeah, I see what you're saying. That was theater, like man. Thing. And Shannon let him have the floor. Like if it Completely. was more interjections, it would feel maybe it would feel more structural. Because I didn't fuck with the Rogan shit like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But that 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 cat just did. But that interview it felt like something different. I couldn't turn my eyes away. I don't know. So <laughs> he was also he was also in there lying too. Oh, talk Ooh. about that. Talk about because there's something you know. I always feel like I don't always know because everybody twists these things. I've seen all the comments for situations I've been there in, like kind of twist it. What do you know? That's just outright. Yeah, tell the T. It's not even no T. It's just like common sense. The nigga said he read three thousand books. Oh a year. yeah, nah, yeah, that was bullshit. He said three thousand books. <laughs> yeah, I, I ain't even three thousand books a year. I ain't when he was like eight that. or twelve years old. Well, eight or twelve. Yeah, he was wild. It's impossible, bro. Picture what are you? Books? He's reading all of book. Dr. Seuss's. If you yeah. use, <laughs> I'm like, yeah. if you use that as a metric for how much truth he was telling in the whole interview, it calls a lot in the question. There was also some other but, shit like, um, so at one point in the interview, he said that um, Fat Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. you remember, he mentioned Fat Tuesdays. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh yeah, he was like Tiff Neville before guy, this guy guy Tory's room. Yeah, yeah. at the um. Mm -hmm. At the comedy store. Yeah. Right. He said that Tiffany Haddish never performed on He said right. Cedric never performed on Something about Kev, well, too. Not, he never... And then not, Guy Tori posted something on his IG. He's yeah. posting, like, pictures of them. Yeah. At, yeah, I'm like, they performed there. So yeah. it's just like some of the little things is like... You think where, he was just yeah. drunk a little? I think that he was going on a tangent with certain things. I feel like sometimes... It, <sighs> 
I think that when he's it's clearly an, an emotional thing for him too on some level. So I feel like he's leading with a lot of logic. Like remember when they caught him on he fucked up the years on like Comic View or whatever. He said like oh four or something when it was like ten years before that or whatever. I th I don't think that it necessarily um is an indication of a lie. I think that it's more that you're just kind of as it's you know what they say like verbal diarrhea. Like mm -hmm. it's all just kind of coming out and some things might end up getting mixed up. But I feel like I don't I don't really look for holes if I don't if you, if if what you're saying doesn't come off like you're just trying to manipulate something towards your benefit. Because Cat doesn't, I don't know what he stands to gain. There was other shit too. He's Is talking he about the, remember he talking about the Illuminati meeting and he was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. hey, one of y'all niggas got to give up your sideburns. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like, when he's talking about this type of shit, it's like, come on, That's bro. comedy, man. That's, That's like, comedy. What That's are comedy. we talking about? That's comedy. And then man. he started talking about his wife. He's like, he has a everybody get they they give you a light skinned wife with an ugly face. Oh, and everybody was posting about that. Yeah. Um, what does he mean? They give you the Illuminati. They give you a light skinned wife with an ugly face. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's a part they of like it's a, part of the plan. Yeah, yeah. Everybody has to have the same with a look. bunch of ugly light skinned bitches. And they're like, this one's for <laughs> you. This one's for you. But he wasn't wrong. That's he crazy. started looking at them. He go, wait a minute now. People put them in the cluster on Twitter. Yeah, yeah. Like, but that's just how you create conspiracy. Any idea you throw out there, you'll find it group of people to go with so i don't think it gives it validity but i didn't overthink the things like the book or him running what he said he could run like sign the dead child and shit you call he said like that's the one thing he disputed did you, you have a video of him running as <laughs> fast as mike vick <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah well how do you feel bro like y'all don't know you seem like you you like like he you got a little tight at him like you got like you have any feelings about this as a comic like do you feel like he was just, like he went too far or something I ain't get tired about nothing. I mean, yeah. I asked my dad what he thought about it, and he was just like, uh, all he had to say was, like, some of it was bullshit, some mm -hmm. of it was truth. Yeah. But overall, Cat Williams, he's a he's a good guy. Yeah. I feel like that's this general too. sentiment. Yeah. yeah I've yeah. seen a lot of those stories coming out, too, about how Cat would just, like, people that open up for him, Yeah, he, he would yeah. just give them, like, Four times what they were supposed to get paid. Yeah. Type like yeah. Isaiah. Yeah. yeah. Like oh, Isaiah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. We, Yo, should, yeah we should call him. We should get him on the line. Let's call him. Let me see what he's doing. Yeah. You we'll should be on. But yeah, bro. Mm -hmm. No, that's a fact. I feel like... uh. Yeah, man. Like, I, I I don't know. We have a different like lens when we look at these kinds of things, I think, just because of a different understanding of the community. You know what I mean? So I think the general... You know. What do y'all think about him calling uh, Kevin Hart industry plant? I don't know. That's ridiculous. <laughs> we watched him. Yeah, yeah. We watched no, we did. Kevin. Yeah. We did. People tend to forget about like hold that on, grown middle on. little man face. Yo, yo, what's oh, good, yeah, bro? Cool. There you go, my boy. I'm good. What's the word, bro? What welcome, you want? Welcome to the pod over the phone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, oh yeah, we should tell you that. Man, what's up? What are we talking about? <laughs> we're just talking about talking how about? we talking about how Cat Williams started off the year with smoke for everybody. We're talking about your man, bro. The Shannon Sharp interview. <laughs> <laughs> the last. What, oh, it's an evil what, what's last. something? What's something in the interview that stood out to you as somebody who um, you've got an opportunity to work with him? Right, I wasn't really surprised for real. Um, Cat is strategic, bro. He do shit like this every few years, but not. It never hit like this magnitude. But what Cat do is he, you know, people talk about him in other interviews. Then he sit and wait. He gather all the information for years, mm. and then boom, bombshell. You know what I mean? That's why he went at um Ricky Smiley. No, no, no. Before Ricky Smiley, what's the <laughs> lady um in Atlanta? Remember he went on. Oh the yeah, radio Wanda, show? Wanda, Wanda, Wanda. Yeah, yeah the radio. Yeah, that like, shit was hilarious. In the previous years, like oh he a crackhead, he going to jail, like he on drugs. So he sit and take all of that, and then boom. Interview, it's like, damn, why he went so hard on her? Because of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it make it seem like he was just wilding on her, but she been talking shit. Yeah. Been talking <laughs> shit, yeah. Like, I never know him to, like, really start nothing with nobody. It's always, like, somebody for him and come out, and everybody like, oh, this nigga crazy. But it's like, he doing it for a reason. Yeah. That's what fair. percentage of what he said in that interview would you say is true? Um. Remember, he said he read 3,000 books. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he said he read 3,000 books, but, yo, he was saying, he was saying when he was a kid, he wasn't allowed to watch TV. He no was way. reading eight yeah. hours a day, but still. Yeah, 3,000 a year. Even yeah, I mean, then. As a child. Like yeah. That's a lot of books. Had to be picture books. books. Had to be picture yeah, books. Yeah, I mean, I mean, but they books, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but they books. 
<laughs> nah. I don't know him to be a liar. Now maybe him running that four two. Uh, <laughs> but you, the, you say the nigga can read fast, but he can't but run he can't fast. Run. Nah, nah. <laughs> was probably a little fabricated. Yeah. <laughs> nah, yeah, we were just. But, I mean, other than that, I don't know. I never know him to be a liar. Like when you know somebody personally, really like know them for real. So I ain't really. I don't know him to be no liar. So he always been straight up. So I don't know how many books that nigga read. Maybe he got the book, the amount wrong, but he probably definitely read a lot of books. Yeah. In the time that you've been around, Kat, have you ever seen anybody, and I'm, I wouldn't ask you to disclose what would have actually happened in this situation, but have you ever seen anybody approach him about anything? Like, Because I feel like there's always, every time Kat comes up in, in reference to other comedians, there's always some kind of issue. But I feel like he's always a touring comic. You know what I mean? I've never really known him to be inactive, and I don't imagine him to duck anybody because I see him in the most random pictures. He was at the Def Jam 25th. So it's like, do you have you ever seen anybody actually approach him in response to, to anything that they feel he said about them or vice versa? Um, No, I ain't never really seen nobody approach him. I mean, I've been out with Cat one time, and I, I don't watch him curse people out like in the industry, and I just watched him not say nothing. Like, I just watched him be quiet. Like, um, people from Cold Black, he cursed them out. And, uh, cause I, I think they owe him some money or something. Mm. And he was, like, he was just like, yo, Cold Black, you, you bitch ass nigga, like, like that. And they just got quiet. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say nothing. It was like, yeah, we, we do owe you money, sir. Yeah, they owed him like <laughs> yeah. a bunch of money. So, yeah, like, I ain't never really seen nobody besides Ali Sadiq. Oh yeah, Ali yeah, y'all seen about this? What is what's yeah. the, I, so? I heard some shit where he so they was doing a show in um I think Ali Sadiq is Houston was somewhere in the south, right? Is he? Right. I thought he was from over here. I, I guess they was in yeah. his home. They was in Ali Sadiq's hometown or whatever. He got a chance to open up or whatever. Then he was talking shit about one of the openers saying like she can't follow me, and I guess word got back to him. I think he came back the next day or something like that, and they, he he was on some shit where he just he he told security to give him his money and send him on his way like, like you good bro, and they didn't let him yeah, back yeah. in. I heard about the not letting him in the building like part. Some miscommunication between them two. I think Ali was going there thinking he was performing, and on Cat and Cat, I don't think Cat knew that Ali was performing. Like when you hear both sides of the story. They both make sense. But somebody lying though. Somebody lying. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know who. <laughs> it's some he say she said. Somebody, somebody lying. lying. <laughs> yeah, like somebody somebody is either just don't remember the whole situation, but it's like when they both talk about it, they both got two completely different responses. Mm. So it is it's weird, bro. I stay out. I think, but I, I think somebody gonna get shot though. Somebody gonna get shot soon. I was just, you, you know think, what? Is I it was that just, deep? Is yo, it really that deep? Yeah, like I think some of it is. Somebody yeah. got it, like a comedian is, is gonna get shot. Like, I think somebody, I think somebody gotta get shot. <laughs> oh, nah, yo, hang up on That's this nigga, yo. You got that on the parlay? <laughs> hang up on this nigga. You thing, got that on the parlay? It's crazy. Yo, I think everybody's gonna be like, oh, y'all niggas getting shot now. Yeah, right, let me get back. Comedian beef is not that funny, bro. Why you think? Why you think it's? Why you think it's gonna go there? Because I was gonna ask you. Because you kind of play a, a role in the middle as a comic. Because you got like a lot of the younger niggas that fuck with you, but you came up with a lot of like the older, like the Def Comedy Jam era guys a little after that right. and such. I just, and yeah, you I just know, this shit been going on. I just think that's either somebody gonna get shot, or somebody gonna pull a gun on somebody. People <laughs> be talking crazy. Like you got a lot of comedians that be out here just talking crazy. But that's the times we in. But we, I, I understand that, you know, drama sells. Drama sells now. So, motherfuckers start doing shit. Like, you got Cat, he put Tory Hart on yeah. his tour. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Then he put Monique. That was a rap tour. move. Yeah. That was a rap move. He's but he is smart. He's smart. He's smart. He's, He's not smart. a dumb move. He's smart. smart. It's not dumb, but it's dangerous. It could be it dangerous. It is dangerous. Yo, Isaiah, do you still feel safe when you go outside? Oh, uh, you know me. Y'all already know me. You and <laughs> hey, y'all know. Bronx. I'm from the Bronx. I'm good. Yeah, you be know careful who I'm out there. Over man. My shoulder every. Be careful, man. It's getting scary out there for the funny niggas. This doesn't make any sense. 
towel and raw. Y'all acting like y'all ain't hear what I was hearing. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I know. That's what I'm saying. This shit ain't like, yo. <laughs> <laughs> this shit ain't They're like, yo, you've been in LA too long. I'm like, yeah, I don't trust nobody over here. <laughs> <laughs> that's that New York. That's what you was talking about. It don't leave. It doesn't leave you. You just talking about that. I go do my shows and I just bounce. I don't come with nobody. If I happen to see you there, that's what's up, but. Yeah, I do my shows and bounce. That's always a hating like ass that. nigga in the crowd. <laughs> <laughs> Never know. Exactly. I like that. I like that. All right. Isaiah, thanks for hopping on for eight minutes exactly. We appreciate, I appreciate y'all, man. <laughs> my dog we always love. We, we had to get you on there because after you said "what the fuck," call me. <laughs> we sent the we sent the list of things we that were going to talk the about. So what the that, fuck? Was with, that was with the talent of Leslie Jones. I need to know what's up with that. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll call you back when we get to that point, but we're going to finish this fucking yeah. episode without you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs> <laughs> that's <laughs> funny he said what the <laughs> fuck call me <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah I forgot you know about that's that so funny but yeah um, uh, like he said like like we were assuming he was gonna say like he said he come from a place of good character you know what I mean and mm-hmm. I feel like maybe that's why like you know she ain't slow up for him like that after like talking about so many people you know what I mean yeah, yeah. you feel like Steve Harvey is like the Jay Z of comedy I don't know like if you what? talk I mean like if you if you talk about it like in a position he's in a power Corporate, that you feel like if you talk you, about Steve Harvey, like it's, it's dangerous because that's how niggas was acting. Are you saying like because his hand in so many different things? Yeah, yeah. Uh, like if you were to slam it, you think it would block way. opportunities I for you? I see what you're saying, but it's like what I'm we, asking. If we're talking Jay Z, we're talking body of work. I'm asking because that's the response I saw when out of everybody he called out, I saw the most people kind of like taken aback by like the audacity of him calling out Steve Harvey to the degree he did. And I feel like it's because Steve Harvey is so much bigger than a comedian now, which is a lot of cat's point. It's like you talking a lot of like comic shit, and you ain't been a comic for a long time, an active comic. Somebody stole Fair. his story, said he stole his life story. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. Like he was in the bathroom watching himself up. He said, that was my story. <laughs> that was my car. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just, I don't know. And Steve is, is like one of the only ones who never said anything. Never posted about it. He just kept putting up family feud and like detergent Coward. ads and shit. Coward? What? He, he, he feel like he has to say something? He pussy. <laughs> I don't feel like, I don't oh, feel wait, like he has to. That. I feel like he didn't have to say anything. Don't you feel like kind of just... I don't back. Know. It's fine. Let it. Let it. It's sp- not my sport. If it was rap, I would be like, "Nah, you got to say something in response because of the sport of it." But I don't know how it works in comedy. I don't oh, know. Like, how, what would you say? That's sometimes not, saying things. Sometimes it just look, it dignifies it. Like Meek Mill. Yeah, but it's, it's how he talks. That, that nigga is. About just, did he? Yeah, he need. He that, just his he issue a little deeper. Up. That nigga need an editor. That's it. <laughs> yeah, no, so like he needs somebody <laughs> to control his so Twitter. Funny yeah. to me. I was you need laughing. PR. Like that's like a whole different <laughs> thing. Like, but I'm saying in that case, you see how Meek Mill did it, and everybody was like, well, "You could have just said nothing." Yeah. So sometimes you don't have to say anything. You know what it is? I, I feel like it's the joke. It's the it's the integrity of how you built your name, and I feel like in comedy that matters a lot. I don't feel so like I Steve Harvey like talks a lot, though. He doesn't, but how does the community look at it? Like, if if you have these claims thrown at you, and a lot of the Mark Curry stuff seems from, like, the general public to be dignified. Like, people seem to have kind of backed the idea that, yo, that seems very likely, if not completely true. So, so the Mark Curry thing, if you're watching the Def Comedy Jam reunion 25-year thing, you see at the end, in the back, there's Mark Curry, there's Steve Harvey, and there's my dad who's standing <laughs> right there in front of them. And you can see Mark is like saying something to Steve and it looks like he's like yelling or saying things like rude or sharp or aggressively. Yeah. And you see my dad, because my dad don't like to be in the mix of nothing. My dad likes to keep his business to himself. My dad likes to be right in the middle and he don't like to be on either side. He likes to be cool. You look like he's listening though. My dad was definitely listening. <laughs> and I bet you my dad was probably like, can y'all stop? <laughs> I bet he was thinking that. And I'm like, y'all getting recorded, but Mark chose that one moment to say something. You probably didn't know he would get another shot. It's, in it. Right. But then I asked, I texted my dad because everybody kept tweeting, look look at JB. He just standing there looking uncomfortable. <laughs> and I was laughing at the clip. So I sent it to my dad. I said, what was they talking about? He said, my dad said jokes. So apparently Mark stole, I mean, Steve stole some of Mark's jokes. And I think Mark yeah. took that chance to address him. address him right in that fucking moment, which is very interesting. Yeah, I think that kind of goes to what we were saying. Sometimes but do you think you're in a he sold a joke for real? Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean the concept <laughs> of the show. Is, <laughs> Hell, I respect yeah. it. Yo. I respect it. It seemed like it, man. It seemed like it. I mean, I'm not above admitting that coincidence is possible. 
you know what I'm saying, in the space, but it don't really seem like it, man. Especially when a nigga can't get a hold of you. Every time I hear somebody talking about, like, yo, I, I haven't been able to find you since. That's fair. You know what I mean? It always makes it look more. Because so, why are you avoiding it? it like, looked, it ain't, it don't got to be that, right? It looked like he ain't try, he been trying to contact him for years about it. <laughs> yeah. He took that moment, he's like, listen. Yeah. <laughs> listen to me. Yeah. And, it, and, and go ahead. Steve Harvey just gives me the vibe of somebody that would do anything for a check. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, mean, I think I that's a lot of people's with that. impression. But some people, sometimes they just be out there for the check. Yeah. But, but I, I think when you're underhanded, it, but if it's if it comes off underhanded and it's public, you know, I think that that could, that could be a, a negative stain on your image. You know what I mean? Because business is dirty. We know that. It's yeah, a lot of nasty shit. Yeah, just trying to survive. It. Yeah. But I think when you when you know it's, we know there's a lot of dirt in it. You ever watch Succession? Like, I love that shit. Yeah, that's what the whole thing yet. is about. I'm right. Sorry. But, <laughs> like, we know that's how the world of business operates. We know everything is about a dollar at the end of the day. But when yeah. your underhanded tactics are, are, are publicly, um, you know, exposed, you know what I'm saying? I feel like that's why most companies have, like, you know, they have people on retainer to clean up images, you know, and for apologies and shit. And mm -hmm. I feel like, especially because of the art form that we're talking about, because we know how serious a lot of that shit could be. Mm -hmm, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? If you, I think that, I don't know, I guess I'm developing my opinion as I'm talking about it, but I feel like, I don't know, maybe you should have to be held accountable in some way. It should be some kind of court. I feel like comedy stealing court. <laughs> comedy court. It's just... Steve Harvey, a judge too, right? Yeah, I was gonna say he, he do got, he Steve just got his, his hand in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, yeah. So it's a dangerous man. I do feel like he just—he's not really a comedian to me anymore. It's so tough though because he's like, he like more of a business dude. So I see why you're saying the Jay Z thing. Just yeah, yeah. You know, I but that know. when you said the, the Jay Z comparison, I'm just thinking Skill. like aside from like just monetary business success mm -hmm. i'm talking about like bodies of work it's yeah just like no 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 what, that's okay. not what i mean what are steve harvey's bodies of work that are yeah. supposed to mirror no. well, i mean when he said it i heard yeah. it as like him just having his hand in a bunch mm -hmm. of shit yeah that's right? all i mean yeah not not, like, not skill set because i never really hear steve come up huge in those conversations but as far as influencing what could be done in the business of comedy transitioning from stand-up when right. i'm hearing about like corporate when everybody's talking about they round, mount rushmore steve harvey don't ever touch no you know no, what i'm saying yeah, like, no, i think because he did he really he pioneered shit and i think you right, can fair. pioneer shit and not be the best at what you do fair you know what i mean and i so i feel like i give him that but i don't think he cares because if he cared you'd see him pop out every now and then he you don't, don't see steve don't do care. a secret set he don't be popping up at the at the stand at the cellar and shit he'll be more than welcome he would never do stand-up comedy again. yeah no it's been so no. long i don't think he was right. and i think to. some of it with a lot of people too is like there's sometimes a pretentious nature about i think how he comes off to other comics like is you don't really hear about him do you like, think giving he walks, a hand yeah he, he might he, i think he might walk around like he better yeah kev don't put a lot of kev put tiff on right like i mean mm -hmm. not that not that these people weren't already doing what they were doing but you know a lot of uh, we could name a lot of guys that the big guys have kind of put in position i guess with steve you got like said and shit but it just seemed like there's a gate that Steve has that people that I've heard comments refer to where he's not really trying to do anything to boost anybody that ain't in his team. Cat said that. Mm. If you're not like two or three people, you know, Ricky Smiley, he says, said in like DL. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I don't know. That ain't as bad, I guess. That's just making sure you keep the best opportunities for you it's, and yours, I guess. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Can't knock it's him. levels. It's levels. Can't knock him. It's levels. Something about him, though. Y'all think something about him? I don't know. Something about his face. He looks like a, like a, like the, I'm just glad he stopped wearing those baggy uh, suits. He looked like the mad scientist in like a kid movie. Like the bald he head and like the mustache. And just, hell yeah. He put him like a white lab coat. It's over. <laughs> hell yeah. That smile. <laughs> now I'm like trying to envision yeah, it. I'm like, yeah. like that. Yeah. I ain't mad at that. All right. Um, so even um after the Cat Williams thing, you know, I was getting all these uh, random DMs like, oh shit, Corey Holcomb talking about your daddy. And I'm like, oh no, here come the bullshit. Yeah, you got to break that down because I, so, I forget what he said about him specifically. Basically, he has said, so my dad's deaf comedy jam set, you know, he had this set, um, had this joke where he talked about the music and like how the music make you feel like you can do X, Y, and Z or whatever. So I think when Cat's first special came out, he had something similar where he played a song and he's like, this music make me feel like I'm doing this, blah, 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 blah. My dad still does the same kind of joke to this day where he plays a song and he's like, play that shit again. I'm going to do this while I'm doing that. Like, whatever. So, like, the music is basically the joke. And then, like, whatever action you do along with the music is, like, the punchline. Whatever. So. You can't call claim to that. But I'm. I, my daddy didn't say nothing. Corey got up there and brought it up. So, then somebody said, hold on, let me find the clips. And they play. It's a, it's similar, but it's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. 
you know. So I'll play the little Corey clip when because he be because <laughs> he be <laughs> <laughs> he be doing stuff. <laughs> You know, the more that I look at you wearing that hat, the more I think about your pops and his fedoras. I know. I'm really, we're like very JB. much the same. Mm-hmm. He's Libra Moon. It. I'm Libra Sun. I oh, really, boy. I get enough. Um, it's a hat oriented yeah. sign. To this shit. No, it's just like a style thing. Okay. You I guys wouldn't it. know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. She not get it. She did. She not get it. She, 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 she threw. Don't. She, she threw shots at us. I was about to say shade, but it be shots. It ain't the first time, dude. You know what's crazy? <laughs> you know what's crazy? She she uh, complimented us today, uh-huh. but also insulted us at the, <laughs> the same, same time. time. I don't even she know if like, a compliment okay. was a compliment. She was like, "Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> I didn't, we fly today." I ain't like the shock of it all. Like, oh, it's like <laughs> damn. <laughs> like she was scared of it. Like I'm, I'm, I'm ugly every day. Then yeah. okay, yeah. my fault. Yeah, yeah. I said, "Okay, okay, big nice. period. Y'all put something on today." <laughs> I try my best. Yeah, I love them dearly. Though. I just had the pew pew. It was just fun. <laughs> okay, wait. Let me play it back a little bit. <laughs> the worst. All I'm saying is, yeah. man, I, you saw I said, I don't know what happened with the joke, but I'm going to tell you something, man. It's a comic named J.B. Smooth. He go with the bullshit. Yeah, I'm going to say, like, we don't know who that is. Underground comic ever. But J.B. Smooth started being around. You know, the other crowd, Larry David and all them, they funny, they funny too, but... Larry David and all them. There's no... This is Larry David. (laughs) Who was all them? He was one of the best ever. (laughs) And I'm telling you, I dare somebody to say this ain't true, because I could get a thousand comics to bag me up. It's a lot of funny names. On 10 First Special. Okay. Well... I root for Cat. I root for Cat. But that joke where he do like, man, if you listen to this song, you can do anything off this song. That's J.B. Smooth joke, homie. I can get a thousand comics to bag me up. Really? Oh, he's saying Cat stole from your dad. Yeah. I thought he was trying to say your dad stole. No. No, He's still just throwing J.B. in it, though. And it's like, J.B. on And he said... I'm talking about... I want to make sure people understand it's a certain joke he did. I think this was his first special where it's like, man, it's a, I can get a thousand comics. I remember he's talking about the uh, I'm a hustler. I'm a, I'm a hustler. I, oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, it was I'm a hustler. Every day I'm hustling. Uh, it's every not one day. of them hustling that songs. One, that one? That, because I remember that from Cat Shit. And that yeah. was like, yeah. like he's shopping pimping or pimping something. Yeah, yeah. Or not. So what he's saying <laughs> is that <laughs> they say, Corey is saying that Cat stole my Stole dad's joke. Jay. When my dad did that joke on Def Comedy Jam, yeah. his first appearance on there. How you do? You, do you... I watched it. It's similar. Yeah, the I'm act not outs saying... are different, though, right? The act outs are completely different. The premise different, is the same, but the premise is the same. So I see why Corey is saying that. I don't think yeah. it's a. It's very similar. Yeah. I don't feel like he stole it. Yeah. I don't think my dad feels like he yeah. stole it. I think it's very much a similar thing. I have seen comics be big enough to express that as well, like that. Sometimes you could just have the same premise. Or yeah, parallel sometimes thought. somebody could give you an yeah, idea on something, but you still build your own thing just from them exposing you to the idea of that concept. Or sometimes you don't even mean to steal it. It's just like a subconscious thing. Yeah. You pick you like Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I feel like you would comic comedy is such a fraternal and such like a close kind of community and wherever you're developing that anyway. I kind of feel like you have the ability to and almost the responsibility to just kind of observe the malice of that of the comic. You know what I mean? Like if the person is coming off snaky and shit and how they doing it and you know what I mean? And you've seen it happen more than once. You're hearing stories about it and shit. I feel like you could be pretty sure this person yeah, just Yeah, like a Carlos jokes. Mencia. There's, yeah. It's, like there's a culture there's a of this person of, stealing jokes before. a lot of evidence. Yeah. I don't. I feel like there's not like one thing that sounds similar to another comic that's performed here while you were here one time, and then yeah. it's just, yo, this nigga be stealing all the jokes. Like, but it, also there was a big gap between it. My dad did the Def Comedy Jam thing '96. Yeah. The Cats thing came out '01. Maybe yeah. it's a, so, that's a pretty mm-hmm. big gap. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if he saw it and he was like, "Cool idea." Yeah. Well, but I'm JB's not tripping. No, my dad's not tripping. You kind of feel like that should be the response for most comics, you think? Yeah, I mean, I. I mean, my there's times where Kevin has said I wanted to be JB growing up, so he said I did steal some of JB's jokes. He did Ke- say that. I Kevin has that. said that. Yeah. You know, my dad, he's a sweetheart, so he's like, you know, I just took it as a form of flattery. Yeah. He's gonna rewrite his jokes the same night. Yeah. We're on the same stage. I'm gonna have to figure yeah. it out. So, you know, it, it is what it is. My, I think my dad just assumed it's like yeah. the flattery thing. I mean, of course, it's gonna happen. 
But I don't think my dad thinks that cat. But maybe stole his shit. It do sound similar though. So it was on Twitter for a second. It was like a big Twitter conversation. But under that video with Corey, it, people were like, oh, that do sound the same. So Cat? they found it weird that Cat was talking about stealing yeah. jokes and shit and that he kind of did something sense. similar. So people were like, oh. Yeah. You saying that about Kev, right, with your pops, it makes me think about, like, because, you know, Shannon Sharp just interviewed Monique, too. Right. That just made me think about the fact that in her interview, she was talking about how Kev kind of called her one time about something, said he would call her back, never did. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? She seemed like he's shady for that. Oh, yeah, and then you see JB either. is all on all over real husbands and he has mm-hmm. a great relationship with Kevin and they have that history. Yeah. So when I see one situation where one person feels like Kev is Hollywood and shuts him out and the other one's well, it's not a thing. Yeah. You know, it does it makes me think about the character. Like cause Monique even has just more a more co- more consistent list of things that kind of feel like it makes you want to draw you can draw on the question why. Right. Or make you not want to join the question about some of the things that she went through, she went through. You know, because I kind of right. could see she don't, she seemed difficult to y'all. What do you think is? I will say, I think her, like when she was talking about being underpaid or whatever beforehand, and like all the things she had brought up, I do feel like her delivery might have been a little yeah. bit aggressive. Yeah. And it just wasn't, yeah. it just wasn't read well, like when people were received, wasn't received well. So then when Taraji was talking about something very similar, yeah, and she was crying on the tour, p- yeah. color purple. You end up making the color. Basically, that felt like that was the color purple press was about her being underpaid and stuff. But I think her delivery was a lot less aggressive and she was crying and it felt like a little yeah. softer. So people are like, oh my God, black women need to be paid. But, yeah. but people are like, well, Monique was saying the same shit. Yeah. But I do think her, she just might be. She didn't cry at all. She, she might need to add a tear. <laughs> but she did, she did seem aggressive in her delivery. But I think she was just, you know. Imagine all those years you're doing all this hard work and you're just yeah. not being seen or hurt. You're just probably upset. I get it. You pissed. Yeah. So she just delivered it wrong and yeah. uh, she wasn't received right and kind of got blacklisted a little bit. I feel like we haven't heard anything from, from her from her in a minute since that whole conversation yeah. kind of went away. And then all of a sudden she came up with Club Shay Shay and I was like, huh? Where'd she come from? Where'd she been? Yeah. But I feel like, you know, she said that when Kev, when she called Kev, she was like, oh, you had like a, she was like, hey, my baby, you had this, there was this white man from your company that told me that we would have to set up a meeting through him. I know you didn't do that to me, right, my baby, all this stuff. This is how she tells the story, right? And Kev's like, no, I wouldn't. In my head, I'm imagining, and this is just pure, you know, pure hypothesis. Mm-hmm. I'm 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 thinking Kev's probably like that's all this extra shit like and, like I was gonna call you I forgot or whatever you know what yeah. I mean I'm just imagining there's some people that are just a little more laid back in the approach with certain things yeah and it makes you more like willing to work with them I feel like there's just so much vitriol and everything she's like when she got donkey of the day she wanted to go up there and get interviewed about <laughs> it the whole interview is about why did I get donkey of the day it's like one of the Leonard. cues in it now yeah Leonard it's just it's like extra sauce <laughs> on it you know what I mean it's like some people just. You can't have. You can tell when some people are being a little facetious in how they're saying shit. And if you're doing that in the environment where I'm actually working with you, I might not want you again. I'm not, and it's not like I'm gonna come out and diss you or whatever. But you may be looking for opportunities with me where I don't want to be like I don't like you, but I might be like. Uh, that's kind of what I get with her, mm-hmm. and it kind of, mm-hmm. and, and I feel like it sounds like it's just mean to say, but I feel like everybody has people that they do that type of shit with in real life. You know, yeah. what I mean, I only thought about it because what you said with your dad, because I know your pops, yeah. and I could imagine unless somebody really violates him in, a, in an extreme personal way that affects his circumstances, it seems like he just just could let certain shit roll off the back because right. it's not keeping food out his mouth. Yeah, exactly. And I you think they, I, mean? I think not everybody's focuses on the wrong shit. Yeah, Why, yeah, sometimes. My thing also is when we are opening these doors like this and we're as a black community, we have the, com- our black comedians are going head to head with each other. Got so much beef. I'm like, do white people be doing that? Do y'all see the white comedians beefing as much as the black people do? You know uh, what I noticed though? You see how Cat was on when he was on Shay's podcast? He was standing up doing football stances, talking all this shit, but he get on Joe Rogan and he's like, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah different Joe. energy. Yeah. Um, I hated that shit. He was whispering. I'm I like, nigga, speak shit. up. Yeah. What's going Why on? you gonna you be know, going well. with the white man and now you all soft spoken yeah. and <laughs> well, on the black well, it was so um, weird. <laughs> that's good. It was so weird. It was like, they, had, they didn't, don't really have a relationship, right? Mm-hmm. Like beforehand. You could tell those two niggas just meeting. 
Yeah. Joe has such random information about so much shit. I feel like that's what makes it entertaining because no matter who's up there, you have no idea what they'll talk about. But if it's yeah. something they both have any type of common interest in, it'll kind of be interesting. Like you'll yeah. find something out. That cat shit was like two niggas who know nothing about their dynamic, but know mad shit about mad other shit. And they it was just talking too. random shit. It was high. Bro, it wasn't even, nothing was even cohesive. It wasn't even cohesive. Mm-hmm. And they both talking so dry and shit. And Joe's trying to excite Cat and Cat's trying to look like he's not surprised. And it's just, it's exhausting. It's like, Cat. Did you know? Did you know that the Bengal tiger is the only one left in like North Africa? And you're like, well, mm. you know, yo, it's tigers, are just <laughs> the lions of the Sahara, really, Joe. I mean, I mean, it's just like it was that for like three hours. The shit is so long. I skipped ahead like fifteen minutes. Like every time it was like, all right, this is dragging. I skip ahead fifteen minutes, and it would be the same shit. It was I didn't it. see anything interesting. But it. why would he change up his personality on that show rather than Club Shay Shay? He felt comfortable. Probably more than what black. I was saying. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm just saying, I don't see white comic beefing as much as black comics mm-hmm. do. And it's like, they're looking at us like, look at him. Yeah. Look at him. I would argue that a lot of it is just because of, you know, I mean. It's built up. Yeah. You they're don't want to get too political that. with it. But yeah, like, because it's not new. Because like, like, uh, like, my pops has had a concept for a while called The Underground. Mm-hmm. That he uh, he shot a sizzle for like a, a year or so ago, just talking about like the concept of that, like during that deaf comedy era, because a lot of people, I think comedy is just coming to the forefront of pop culture a certain way yeah. the last few years, and it's happening pretty quickly. Right, Instagram clips and stuff, you know what I mean? And I feel like people are starting to entertain comics like they do rappers, like they do actors, you know, just was the way that they look at certain fields is starting to be looked at more, but the background of it isn't as well understood. Right. And like that whole underground concept that my pops had. It was like about how a lot of these guys came from drug dealing, you know, gangs and shit, the street, like in a real way. Same right. way these rappers and shit did. And I think that when your equity is jokes, you know what I mean? A lot of people who are just kind of new to the idea of it are thinking like, you know, like this, these guys is clowns. They're just funny guys. You know what yeah. I mean? So they don't know that these people have real issues that some of it goes, it's not about the jokes in the stage. It's just they have real personal shit. It's like musicians. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I think that with black people, you know, the communities that we've we've come up in, especially you talk about that 70s, 80s era, yeah. there's just a lot of vitriol and shit in them. You know what I mean? Based on the experiences that kind of comes out in that field. Same way you do with other niggas and, and other shit. And it is whack to see compared to other races, but it comes from a place. You know what I mean? It's not like it's just random. No, but y'all it's don't definitely do not dis- no, it's definitely not yeah. random. It's just... I just think they've been sitting on a beat for so long and now they have the platform to kind of be yeah. like, look at me, yeah. I'm pissed about this. Yeah. So when everybody kept coming out with the little videos, I was like, oh, Lord, mm-hmm. have mercy. You know, yeah. open a can of worms. And Cat kind of made Shannon like the platform now for comics on that level. And now everybody's like, Yeah, hey. now they got one. Yeah, yeah, so, everybody's going up there. I mean, it's just, they just never talked about it. Mm-hmm. They never talked about it. People surpass people in different lanes and yeah. and then they just got jealous. They get jealous because yeah, they're like, right. I'm funny. Why am I not there? Y- I think that's a natural. Th- I mean, it's a natural yeah, it's to be happens. jealous. Yeah, because insecurity is going to come in that, especially that kind of business. You meant telling jokes, man. I could imagine being up there and shit right, ain't funny. You know, some other people it's rubbing your off. art. Yeah, so yeah. you're like, I'm very it's like personal. It's you personal. sensitive about it. Yeah, yeah. cool. Yo, talent. You said before we had an episode before we talked about like generations, and I remember you saying that you know, like y'all, you feel like y'all generation is a little off that. Like you and Julio is mad tight. You Julio Harvey, y'all be doing shows together. They don't feel like it ever get nasty like that i'm like you just get into it with they boys and shit but it don't ever feel like it will come like wait till i see that nigga type energy do you feel like that element exists in, in your, generation? your generation of comics in the city nah you think it's, it's different it's, and why nobody's like that i don't know i'm just saying it's just like nobody wants to fight <laughs> <laughs> what do you think oh, made the difference piece. though because why do they like why do you think they there's so much more there's so much quicker to you know i don't know maybe I, take it there I, Mike Epps said he was going to shoot him. <laughs> was it that deep? I kept sending my dad all this said, stuff. I, don't I promise fight. you. I it's going to be bang, bang, What's going on? I said, What's going yeah. on with the men? Is all right? Man? Yeah, it's crazy. They need a fucking hug? What's That's going different, on? man. Mike, y'all know Mike is mad cool. Like, look at like, nigga. You're going to shoot him. You're going to shoot Mike Epps is going to shoot Shannon Sharp, nigga? I'll tell 2024? you. I just saw Shannon Sharp in the airport <laughs> you when did I was coming from that. LA. You hollered at him? Newark. Yeah, I said, I texted my dad. I said, I'm about to go over to him and say, stop it. Right here. <laughs> stop stirring the pot. Oh, I texted y'all shit. I texted y'all yeah, shit. Told it was so funny. I kept looking. I was like, maybe I'll say something to him. Did you? Enough. Enough. Huh? Did you holler at him at all? I did not say anything. Yeah, I yeah, should have. Yeah. No, nah. So did did he have tight clothes on? He did. Y'all he saw did. him coming out that whip? I, they said he had a hip replacement. Y'all making fun no, of that No, but still, man. man. Now you shouldn't be wearing it then. 
Right? Like, why was it so tight? Leg, little you, should, you should probably want a little more room. You just had it. That's it why he really walked like that? He got a hip replacement? He got a hip replacement. Okay. Oh, yeah. Now this makes sense. I saw it on Twitter. You're not so, buying oh, it? You're not buying it? <laughs> you ain't buying it. No, I'm, I, no, I'm saying I, I, get, I get it now. Now it makes sense. Duh. Yeah, be, this nigga lying. Be nice to him. Like, the he hip got, replacement to give you a little twang. You know. Yeah. You know. Oh, and you no. step. It's a, <laughs> <laughs> All that to say. I told my dad he should go on Club Shay Shay. I was like, you should go on there and bring the peace. That would be a dope um I was like, bring the peace. Vibe to JB. Even the aesthetic matches his Yeah, physics. dude. You know, he's going to go in there with a fly ass suit or a sweater. Yeah, you got to tell them sweater, stories. Uh, uh, cardigan thing. Tell that Cap Calloway like, story. Oh my God. He would love to tell stupid. that damn story. <laughs> Um, you always get notifications on that one, so I see that story at least once a week. Really? The Cab Calloway clip. That yeah, somebody's was... always. Yeah, somebody just that. comments like <laughs> randomly, like <laughs> all the time. Yeah, that that was... is Demetrius. <laughs> like every three days. Oh, like, Demetrius I see this shit one again. is always going crazy. Because of how he wears socks, socks at. at. <laughs> yeah. Asking for a friend. Asking for a friend. Oh, yeah. I'm like, okay. But why do you think? I'm sorry, I don't want to get too sidetracked from. Like, why do you think that is? Like, what did y'all establish differently? Because it's. I mean, it could be a deeper thing. Because it could be even outside of comedy. It just feels like generationally like young i don't know do you think they feel like they have more opportunity because like everybody like maybe everybody has access to social media maybe back then they probably felt like they worked really hard passing out flyers you're talking about yeah, current, you're talking about current like, beef or i'm talking about why do you think it about, doesn't exist the same way yeah, as like it used different. to i think jerry is kind of on to it. i think that's it because you put in so much more footwork you're, for all of it. so maybe? much more footwork you're going word of mouth passing out flyers yeah. you know like trying to like that's how and you got your name out and they used to say there. it only be like one remember that yeah, it's always like one, one at a time one. especially to all the black comics so they're yeah. like oh okay i got only but now and, there's so many uh, there's so much yeah. more opportunity for the younger comics now the social media that might be part of it too when you ask about like why we never see it with the white comics because making it like a bit like a bigger thing of just like the race component just kind of in the country in general yeah. white people were never it was never one at a time yeah. you know what I mean like it's kind of right. like crab in a barrel like you're kind of put into a position where it feels exactly. like you have to yeah. to fight each other in order to get it and they don't have to worry about that exactly you know what I mean they're not Bingo. even compared to each other and look at them they about to have us blaming us <laughs> about us blaming ourselves again yeah right that easy Look, uh, uh, black black history <laughs> just ended cut that <laughs> but nah yeah but that yeah. I mean that might be that might be it, actually. That's a good point. Look, look, I think that us. might be it. That Pushed makes a lot together. of sense. That makes a lot of sense. You're right. It was very much a crab in a barrel thing. Yeah. You're right. Only one is mm -hmm. black. We're black. Everybody it's only one of us. They can't be more. Yeah. Oh, everybody's. Yeah. And you're the only one who ever really knows everything you did. Like when you do an interview, like if Michael Blackson do an interview, he tied that cat or whatever, he can't really talk about like how much you went through from 96 to 2001. People will tell parts of their experience, but it's an amalgamation of a lot of feelings. You could have a lot of nuanced experiences with someone before you have like the feelings you do about them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah. yeah it's crazy shit. Uh, Who else? Who else? Is rolling to, uh, Darna, uh, Darnell. Darnell. Darnell and Corey. And Corey. Corey again. Corey again. He is the, uh, um, the something, catalyst man. to. <laughs> You always saying something. The common denominator. The catalyst of chaos. <laughs> He's so funny. Corey's and sometimes it's so outrageous. He's like, why is he doing all that? You fuck with Corey, bro? No, nah, of course. I fuck with yeah. him. He's he hilarious. I think he's funny. out, though. I've seen I Corey. Corey. Corey is hilarious. So he's not not funny. Yeah. I just think he's always he's not stirring the pot. He be wilding, yeah. Yeah, it's like one of those guys you got to compartmentalize. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. You, you can't funny. take his funny away from him. No. Yeah. I got a Corey Holcomb story. I don't know if I told it on here. Did I tell you I when I seen him at Clark Atlanta? No, no. <laughs> he bombed the school. He I tried to get in that school. Nah, I tried to get in that school too. Yeah, where? So it was. Um, I was there for my my boy. He used to go to Clark Atlanta. Um, so I went down there for the homecoming or whatever, and they they booked Corey Holcomb to perform. What year is this? This is like twenty fourteen, thirteen. This got to be like, yeah, between it's around like twenty thirteen. So that's like him twenty fourteen, right? Yeah, around that time. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I actually was listening to a podcast him one time. He was on Neil Brennan had an old podcast oh, called The Champ. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. Yeah. Uh -huh. So they were interviewing him, and they asked him. They were like, "Yo, like when? Like when's the last time you bombed? Do you still like ever have a bomb every now and then?" And he was okay. like, "Yeah, I feel like there's always gonna be a situation you're not prepared for." And then he started to go into that story about. He was like, "Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I did Clark Atlanta." Um, so like 10 minutes before the show, they, they told me, um, yo, you just got to be clean. Huh? Oh, oh, not Corey. He, he they can't. told him that right no. before he about to perform. Oh, no. Nah, First of all, like who booked him? Yeah. Right. Clearly, yeah. you know what his know. material is right. if you booked yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. Dang. So no, Clark his, Atlanta, Clark Atlanta. right before he goes up. Even his agent like, should have. 
known better. Yeah. Like they should like. But that. if they telling you right before you go up, then That's it's fair. like. But it, you're right. Who did book him? Yeah. Fact. So Clark Atlanta is about 70 percent women. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I'm um, in there. I seen at least. 10, 15 pregnant women in there. Just, <laughs> just the bellies. Just bellies at in the, the auditorium. Why they pregnant at the school? <laughs> hey, hey, man, it'd be you like know? that. Yeah. You mom. <laughs> Single mom. You gotta, get the, you gotta get the degree. <laughs> so he gets out. He just, he don't do nothing clean. He do Corey Holcomb. Oh, shit. So he, he going crazy. So he went out there. He went right into his abortion joke. I ain't even mad oh, at him. Oh, no. He started wild, like. I ain't even mad at that. One of my favorite, <laughs> one of my favorite Corey Holcomb abortion jokes. He was like, "Hey man, I don't even take my girl to the clinic no more. So I, I just go to Six Flags. Oh no, get on every roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> he said I get on every roller coaster in there. That'll She's do like, it. She's like, oh my stomach hurts. That'll oh, do it. Time to go. <laughs> So he, he got said mad that. abortion So jokes. he just doing Why? all his shit in there, and so yeah, in so Atlanta they don't boo you. In Atlanta, everybody take out their keys and they just start shaking their keys. For real? That's I've never even heard of that. You been out there? You did shows out there? I've never done comedy out but there. You know, but yeah. that's when I learned that. Yeah, that's Because everybody <laughs> that's took like, out their keys. <laughs> Go home. They shaking his keys and he just... <laughs> yeah. He's, he's just going. Still just so he, he didn't just know that his... was the that was the get off the stage thing. He probably didn't give a fuck. No, he knew what was happening. He knew it was uh, a, a it was a like get a form of getting. Of he knew that, yeah. but he was just like <laughs> and give. I don't give a fuck. Y'all paid me. I'm gonna do my time yeah. type shit. Bill oh Burr got a notorious you know what I mean? one of those. I don't know. Yeah, 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 Philly, yeah, yeah, Philly, yeah, Philly, Philly. That was yeah. Of course, my pops been like he, put you on when whenever. When he first, like, you you ever heard of Bill Burr? He was like, yo, look up that shit. But yeah. it's like, yeah. Yeah. That's a good one to put things on, too. Some mm-hmm. game out of that. But yeah, nah, Corey be wildin' though, man. But I, I think, but at the same time. You gonna play it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh my fault, my fault. My fault. I forgot like we had a clip. <laughs> Go ahead, She's ahead. ready. Let's get it. This is when they were at the Laugh Factory. You mild sauce, my nigga, mild. M I L. Oh, that nigga mild is crazy. <laughs> Ketchup, you ain't have some Ketchup is pretty good. Nobody agrees. <laughs> so wrong. I, I actually like ketchup more than hot sauce. Ketchup is a must. I'm talking about ketchup. We at the, we at the, uh, what is this called? This is the Laugh Factory. <laughs> if we was at the Savoy, you wouldn't be able to be up here that long. <laughs> Get your whole ass down. <laughs> he be drunk. <laughs> Fuck that nigga. Hey, you ain't never <laughs> with them rules. You just said that. I can talk to you straight up. You want to talk about it? You saying I'm mild. You saying I ain't come through the streets or the gutters and straight bull. If you want to ask somebody, ask the mother that you know what I do. Okay, all right. Listen, listen. This be fair. Fair conversation. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> And nah, he was married. killing that nigga though. You say you keep it a hundred. Know how I get down. How? I ripped. You ripped lights? I ripped. You, you, you ask any <laughs> ever seen you, me, bro. You, anybody. You, and you ask you anybody funny? who don't know oh, me. Shit. I keep it gangster. I love when he calls him a provocateur. I ain't no bum. No, I ain't no bum. And that saw. That saw. Yo, funny is my own. Beep, 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 beep. You know what? You know what you are? You're a provocateur. <laughs> <laughs> You're a provocateur. That's my favorite part. Hey, nothing. You was at the mall and put you out with your hot dog in your head. And guess what? And guess what? And guess what? You can say what you want to say. You can say what you want to say. You calling me a mild comic is totally off. So you a strong guy. I'm a bitch. Yo, why he being? You a strong guy. Yo. I'm a mother beast. Yo, I love Donnell, man. Like, personally, I but, really like Donnell, man. But he be having me dying and not always on purpose. Talent made a good point, though. He's like, why would he argue with the nigga yeah, with the bro. mic? Yeah, He yeah. should know better. That was the first thing you said. You said that, just and I said, said you know what? Yeah. He's a veteran. Yeah. Where he should know. Yeah. Donnell is an emotional guy. You ever see his Breakfast Club shit and all of that? Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know what it is about Donnell, I think, a lot? is like he has a really natural, like, physical funniness, though. Like, his natural demeanor, his speech patterns and shit. And it's, but he can't help those things. So I feel like in any moment where he wants to kind of feel a little elevated or not stuck in that space, like a lot of his peers have been, it kind of frustrates him. But it just don't, don't come out right. 
I don't know. It's like I've never heard nobody call nobody a provocateur before. He was definitely holding that in <laughs> for like three years. Like I'm gonna find somebody. You, you know what you are? You're a provocateur. He pronounced it mad good. You know, the R was strong. He went. <laughs> you're a provocateur. <laughs> <laughs> you're Dave saying that shit for sure. So yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely you're Dave saying that. I mean, I feel like do I you under- think Donnell is mild? No. Mild to call? I don't know. I've seen him so kill. Like, I've seen him kill so multiple. Why would even say that? Well, that's what he do. It's, I mean, it's comedy part. though. At the same time, it's like that's like if you at a show, somebody doing a joke about something, they say something, and then you in the audience like, Nah, man, that's not even true, man. It's it's 98 degrees in Hawaii. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. wrong. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't have Apparently yeah. that was going on for a minute, though. You saw his interview with TMZ when he said, when he said it was that made him, like, that made him get up. He said, because he said, he said everybody who has three, or more, has three movies, or more movies, you suck had the to dick suck or something. Dick. Yeah. And then Donnell said, I thought to myself, hey, I got three movies. <laughs> That's crazy, yo. But is that a that's hit dog situation? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, this don't, it's like, that's, don't interact. That's, that's meek. That's what you were saying about me. Yes. It's like some people like want to utilize the tool of the internet, but aren't the best at doing it. And it's like th- it exists for people to make fun of and laugh at you mm-hmm. in these spaces. You know what I mean? So when you're going to defend yourself or do anything that, that, that will call for some type of public outcry, you got to be calculated in how you're going to do it yeah. if you don't want to also end up on the receiving end of some of it. Right. You know what I mean? Because I get what Corey's wrong in, but like you said, in the context of that situation... It's like it's hard for you to win if you die now. Like you know when he mean? said yeah, that they would kick you out the mall if you yeah. was doing that. You know, lead a club. Cause, like, cause it's like, what are you doing, bro? Yeah, like Isaiah said, like he do his says he did. Like Donnell was on that show, you know what I mean? And they brought up Corey after, and it was like I guess he wanted to holler at him, and I could respect that on as a man. But <clears throat> if you're gonna do it in that way, you know what I mean? Then he left. Yeah. So it's not like it, you even really got your shit off. You know? And I love Donnell. I don't know Corey like that. You know what I mean? And as far as like. Who I would stand with, you know, as far as like character, definitely fuck with Donnell. And yeah. I think he's funny. You know I think I mean? both oh, of them are hilarious. hilarious. Yeah, Corey is. I think they're both very funny. Yeah, yeah, no, nah, Donnell, Donnell funny. Donnell but funny. see why we can't just I've come Corey, together. Uh, I've Corey seen Donnell, Donnell level just come rooms. Together? Yeah, yeah, multiple times. Yeah. Donnell was real frequent at Caroline's when I worked there. Uh-huh. You've seen uh, him a few yeah, times. I've seen him at Caroline's. Yeah, so I've seen him a lot there. He just saw so like you know him and my pops is real cool. You know, so I've seen Donnell a lot. I'm cool with his brother. You know what I mean? I used to do uh, mocha uh, open mic, yeah. uh, Smokey mm-hmm. Suarez's room. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe my second year in comedy, I did that. And Donnell was on the show. Yeah. Killed it. Kill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. No, Donnell be killing, man. People And people love Donnell. I mean, he has a very distinct delivery. High energy. What? I really fuck with Corey, though. You think they're the same? Like, I mean, just as you far as you fuck, fuck, you fuck with Corey yeah, I think more. Donnell you fuck with Corey, Corey more. No, no, I mean, just comedically. Just comedic, just comedic, I'm asking. This is just fun. Who y'all, who y'all think is funnier? Uh, Personally. Y'all want to get We don't got to get it. I was just wondering. I don't, I don't know. know. Um, I think, I just, just Corey to me is like one of the ones. I think Donnell is a really good comic. Great comic. Yeah, they're different. Uh, different. I mean, like, that's hard. I'm like, but our top five is different than a lot of niggas, but we still got our favorites. Yeah, you know that's what I mean? fair. Corey just, I think Corey more organically has me just cracking up. I think I, you almost never know what he's going to say. Yeah. You know what I mean? Especially it's if like you haven't heard the comedy. joke the first time you hear it, it's like you can't like control response Yeah, to it. fair, You know what fair, I mean? Fair. I feel like. I don't get that. So I, I feel like maybe much. Donnell could be a little bit too extra for me sometimes. Sometimes. I see sometimes. What you're okay. But, but it's his character. Yeah. And there's a good amount of people that want that from him specifically. Yeah. It's just, it ain't my But it's like an hour of like that. that. That's what I'm saying. Versus an hour. And I saw the you special. I mean? They came out because I love Donnell. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, like as a, as, a, as a person. And I do think he's funny. I'm going to tap in. I think, yeah. Didn't he? Wasn't oh, yeah, he yeah, at yeah. the. Um, it was a blue note. I think he was at the probably because they be over there. Most but he was doing it. I want to say Robert Glasper was there or probably. somebody, and then he was doing the opening. But he kept cursing a lot, and I think people nigga, 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 and people were upset about it. Mm. It was the blue note, and then I think sometimes Dave comes in there too, and they do a little yeah. something or something. Yeah, but I think it was Donnell that one night, or mm-hmm. he had a, something going on, and I think he mm. didn't. get So I think Talib does his pot out of there and shit. Yeah, so, I know so they always... it was like one night when he was there and he was saying nigga, I think too much of it. Yeah. I think he bombed a little bit. Yeah, but that yeah. was like a like years ago. But I can see how he sometimes can do too much. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and and that's the that's the character, you know. I think he is one of those comics. Like he in a in a stand up special that he just put out. One of the first things he says is, "I ain't asking no more." 
You know what I mean? I like new names like Ashmore Lawrence okay. instead of Ashy Larry. <laughs> I think that's funny, Ashmore Lawrence. But it's because that that's attached to him because it's that delivery that and that him. sensation. All the nigga and all that shit. It's but like, yeah, but that, I think that's the, yeah. It's, yeah, it's like an Uncle some, Ruckus type thing almost. Like, very like, much yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, how long are you going to... He, I, he can tell he wants to he wants to shake that like he's conscious of it and he cares i think that's where a lot of this comes from like he cares he wants to be as great as he could be and i feel like having dave is you know like your right hand or like one yeah. of your best friends right there will do that to you but i think he just has but, some work to do in specific spaces and i think he'll do it you know what i mean yeah but, i mean he got time yeah right you watched the special right work. yeah i did. did you you watched it all the way through you fast forward i gotta do like half of it that's it funny yeah. oh, it was cool Donnell. did you watch it again would i Mm -hmm. I've seen it before. I've seen it live. Oh, you said that. I've seen it live. Oh, you've seen a lot of times big. when you see these guys say it's like I don't know what if, I, if a special going into it is is it, if it's not like a storyline almost. You no, know, some people have a theme like yeah. Chris with tambourine and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm more into those, I guess. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I, I don't know. I like Shane Killer shit a lot. Mm. Some things just don't feel like specials. You know, you've heard that conversation. Some yeah, just feel like it's just it. sets. You people know, and everything just, ain't. Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe I'll watch it. You didn't watch it, right? Nah. I mean, I started, but um, yeah, I didn't finish. I gotta, I gotta. Sit Where is it at? Right. Netflix. Netflix, yeah. Netflix. Wow, it's a couple really, joints really on there. I gotta watch. I gotta finish Mike Epps. I was watching. I didn't like, watch Mike Epps. Yeah. I didn't see it. Somebody so. said it was his funniest shit yet. Yeah, I, I could believe that. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Um, what do you think his funniest joint? The um, what do you think? Really? One, you one mic. I say it like that. One mic. I'm not. Why you say it like shit that? Yet. What do you think is funniest? I just think he's funny all. Yeah. All around. You think he? You think he passed his prom? No, I don't think so. I think some of these guys get better with time. You know what I mean? So That's I don't know. fair. I'm going to watch it, then I'm going I'm to circle back yeah, to I ain't see it either. I can't I have a full that. opinion about it. No, um, Who else beefing? Because <laughs> that Donnell thing. The Donnell Tiffany Clark Haddish game, and man. America. America. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on with her? So she you, got, you know Tiff? I'm sorry. Go I ahead. You should break it down. I'm first, yeah, I'm I mean, I met her a couple of times. Yeah. She was always cool when I met her. But she's, mm -hmm. been, she's been around for a long time. I think a lot of people don't realize that. So when she had the girls trip thing. I was like, oh shit. Tiffany. Yeah, it like catapulted. Yeah, she was I was like, here. holy shit, Tiffany. And I kept going, y'all yeah. know she's been around for yeah. a minute. But yeah. no, people like didn't know yeah. that. So I always would be like, yo, she's been around for a yeah. while. So anyway, so the other day she was on Instagram. And this <laughs> lovely lady decided to take a selfie of herself or a video. No, it was like a live or something yeah. like that. She posted. Yeah, she's on the plane. She's on the plane. Mm -hmm. She's drinking a little mimosa, champagne, whatever. And she's <laughs> like, I got to go check out Palestine. No, Israel for myself <laughs> and see what's really going on That's out right, there. Baby. And everybody was like, what the fuck? Like, yeah. <laughs> Why would you go to Israel when you know there's a lot of stuff going on over there? So I just feel like she can't catch a break right now. I feel like it's back to back. She went on TMZ and was like apologizing and she was crying a little bit and she was like, She apologized? She apologized, she apologized and because, no, she apologized for making that post or whatever. And then I think Monique had said something about her and then she came up and she was like, I don't have a husband. I don't have a man to support like Monique. And she started crying. And I was like, what the man got to do with it? Posting about the damn Israel thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think she just hasn't caught, caught a break. I don't know what's going on with her. Because uh, she got that DUI. She was like sleeping in her car. That was a couple mm -hmm. months ago too. So she can't catch a break. I don't really know what's going on with her. Yeah. But I, I think I'm ever since that situation with Aries happened, she ain't, she ain't really been all the way That, right. yes. Yeah. And that kind of just like. Went away, or I don't know where it went, but maybe you they might be right. They won't go away. Like that's why they be saying that cancel culture shit ain't real. I think it's you not. just have to be real calculated in how you respond. It's and I don't think she's moment. been the best. No, she hasn't responded yeah. properly. But Aries she... is kind of doing more right than her right now. He's back on Vlad and shit. Really? Yeah, and he was the one that was really wild in the Yeah, I think it was him, and she just happened to be. Yeah, but she was in it. There. So that's like yeah. you kind of co-signing it, being in it. It was her he was fake doing the worst he was parts wild. of it. He was yeah, wild. I ain't like that shit either. And I'm not one of those like sense of comedy shit. But I could look at something and not want to cancel you and be like. Yo, you kind of weird. That was a little weird. It was <laughs> a, little, a little weird. I was like, oh. it's like that's not funny. Yeah. But yeah, it's so, ways to do shit like that. But that was like damn It wasn't near, funny. Yeah, it was damn near the it was actual very thing. Very weird. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yeah, so that's what she did. So a I lot heard, of she, got I heard she lost fourteen thousand followers off of that one post. Well, a lot of people have been losing followers. It was just off insensitive. Of that shit. She shouldn't have yeah. done that. She shouldn't have done that. Why She's are you doing to be that? Silly and then yeah. like she did this. People didn't catch on. It wasn't funny. Mm -hmm. What you? But still, what you think they're gonna show you? Even if you was being like serious, yeah. what you think they're gonna show you? On you think they're gonna show you the drone strikes? Yeah. You think, like, what are you gonna <laughs> look at? This shit. It's true. Like, what no, are they? What are they gonna do? But I, I don't know fun. how her trip went. But I know she was on TMZ crying. I heard that clip. So yeah, the God internet be having her. people talk, man. Yeah, but I, I think she just hasn't caught a break. She had that. She got that peak, and mm -hmm. then it kind of just kind of. I think Tiff. 
she seemed like she got a big heart, but, but I don't I mean, know. She's, if she's in a weird place right yeah, now. Yeah, and she's not always aware of how what what she does on her platform could affect people now. I guess because of the position she's in. I don't even like to say affect people, but you know what I mean. Maybe stop drinking. <laughs> I think End she of the just, day. But I think it's clear she's going through some shit. <laughs> she's going through some shit. So the drinking is, you know, her shit. Yeah, but we know. We shouldn't vice. know. Like, once it's DUI. But I wish somebody shit, would just help her. Get a her. driver, baby. But my thing is, why are you... But also, I don't know. Maybe somebody need to hold her hand. And I guess Monique was judging her, blah, 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 that she needed to get a husband or some shit. Girl need said. therapy and... And a team. Who's her team? That's what I'm saying. Rehab. You shouldn't Where's be in that position at? and like all of this come out like that. Where's your team, baby? Somebody got to take something. But she seemed like she likes to roll alone. Yeah. You know what I mean, probably. you seen when she did that last year? Thing Does she like school? to roll alone or has she pushed everyone away close to her? It could. Well, I saw she did an interview on The Breakfast Club. Recently? Uh, yeah. Pretty recent. Like mm-hmm. no more than like a month ago. Mm-hmm. And it was right before this. Yeah. Plane shit. <laughs> oh, right before the plane thing. Yeah, but she was saying she was with somebody, some celebrity. She was with Charlemagne, you know, and he was in Mexico or something. Like four or five of them got invited to some party. She didn't want to go to the party. She wanted mm-hmm. to go to a bar and like drink by herself and meet the locals and shit. And that's mm-hmm. the type of shit she's always been like that. Interviews and stuff. Everybody just laughs and, you know, it's, it's jokes, you know, and you have a crazy story. But that seems to genuinely be like who she is, like a free spirit in that sense. And I think as mm-hmm. your celebrity increases, it, you... You develop more responsibility in those things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or people expect you to. I don't mm-hmm. know if that's even all the way fair, but that is how it goes. And I think once you get there, you got to at least know. Somebody in your corner got to be telling you, all right, maybe don't tweet that. Yeah. Meek. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> don't, you know, like, it's just, don't, don't, don't worry about that. it. Yeah, that's fair. Um, talent, <laughs> uh, why your dad hate Leslie Jones? <laughs> Yo, should we call Isaiah? <laughs> <laughs> you want to know about it? I feel like you told us, but I don't remember now. He doesn't hate her. He doesn't hate her. I think, from what I remember, he just told me that, like, back in the day, she used to always try to, like, you know, get at him. Oh. And he, you know, never accepted the advances. Oh. And then later on, um, like, after, you know, she, SNL and everything, I guess he reached out to her for um, Keenan's uh, contact or something like that. And then she hit him with the, like, oh, now you want to fuck with a bitch. Oh. You well. know, because I'm- And not uh, even as a joke? Like, she really denied no, no, the opportunity she, from him? I'm not sure. I'm not sure she, if she gave it to him, but- You had to get that she off, did have to. She did get that off, like, oh, now you want to fuck with a bitch Oh, she got to get that off. You can so, say it, but you got to give me the contact. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, all right, I'll feel you. I mean, let me get that. Yeah, let me get right, that. Right. You know what I mean? But- I think he might have still got the contact though. Yeah, he I know he got, got, got a chill. Still, yeah, he loves me alone. Man. Well, you got your contact, bro. Call Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> no, oh man, that's God. not real beef though. No, it's okay, not. Like yeah, fake, I get, it's like I get fake that impression. Beef, fake beef. Yeah, I get that impression. Um, well, guys, this ever? was a lot of fun. I miss y'all. I miss y'all too. too. Yeah, this was fun. We got a lot of good things for our season two. I know we've been um chilling for a minute but thank you guys for always we'll be back tuning us tuning in and we'll be back we promise that we have a good good addition coming to season two you want to like did you want to hit that season two we got a little surprise i mean i mean we could say it you want to say it this is just this is just gravy this is a gravy episode this ain't a little taste (laughs) you want to call it the gravy gravy episode episode. (laughs) a little sprinkle a little parmesan hey parmesan um comedy beef and gravy Comedy, beef, and gravy. All right. So you want to say it? If yeah. Say so, it? I mean, as you guys know, you've seen Isaiah um, come on here. A few times. A few times. Uh, and we have talked as a collective, and we think that he might be an amazing addition to our show. That's why we even called him. We so desperate for his presence. <laughs> we called the nigga on the phone. We it's had to hear what he had to say. Yeah. So, um, and I'm sure you guys would love to hear what he has to say. He has a lot of good things happening for him right now as well. So Thanks. You just he's gonna Netflix. have a yeah, Netflix. He's mm-hmm. gonna have Netflix as a joke. This is a perfect platform to him to oh, yeah. be on with us uh, and, and for he him grew to get up with us. And he was gr- supposed yeah. to be on this originally, which we said in like yes. the first episode he was on here. He's in he's our always age been a part of the comic. Right. He's always been a part of the idea of Ken comedy. So right. it only feels right to add him in here. We started, mm-hmm. we just did the shit without him because you know he lived yeah. far. We were saying the only thing it might be the way I'm looking at it is because Jerrica and 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 uh, Isaiah both live in Cali, <clears throat> and me and Talent live in New York. So we coordinate when Jerrica's gonna be here so we can record. But doing her and Isaiah at the same time might be hard. 
So the way that we kind of like establish it is almost like he's like a recurring character. Yeah. He's like like the neighbor, like like he's Urkel. He is Urkel. <laughs> Urkel. He just walk in the door sometimes. He's he gonna be here Urkel, whenever we can have he's him. He's Roger. Yeah. He, yeah, like. right. So for production purposes, you might not see him every week, but we'll have him here as often as we can. Get yes. him on the line of work too. We could do that. Yeah, once, once in a while, there. grabbing yeah. him up on the phone. Mm -hmm. Um, but we definitely need we need him. I think it's cool. And I love being the only girl, so we <laughs> do that. you? I do. That, I do. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, fun. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. Uh, but good. thank you guys for listening to this freaking bonus episode. We really had to get in on that. I'm so sorry. Yeah. It took so long. So much going on. I know because all this, a lot of this stuff happened at the top of the year. But every week, I feel like something kept coming out. I kept texting the group. I said, "Nah, we yeah. got to get on this shit. We got to go on this shit." <laughs> so thank y'all for listening. This was a wonderful bonus episode of Kenna Comedy, and we holler at y'all later. See y'all soon. Peace. Peace.